tattoos can be about the past, present, or even the future. Immigrating from Mexico to East LA as a young boy, Rafael Valdez went from working in scrap metal junkyards to becoming a mariachi music sensation and one of the most sought after tattoo artists, a favorite among David Beckham, Kylie Jenner, and a whole list of top models. Before we get started, click subscribe, leave a comment, and let us know if there's a tattoo story you want to see on Think and Ink. This is where the magic happens? Yes, sir. Uh, you, work, you do tattoos with a lot of models. A lot of them, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, so yeah. How, how did that part come about? I think it all started after I tattooed Kylie Jenner. The next thing you know, it was all over like Spanish television. Mark Anthony gets a new tattoo and that, that, that. So he literally put me on the map and then his word of mouth was what led me to tattooing literally every celebrity I tattoo nowadays. Not bad for a kid who immigrated from Mexico at age 10, not speaking a word of English, and would spend weekends recycling scrap metal just to help his family make ends meet. This was our first source of income here in the United States. But this is not just another brag story about a celebrity tattoo artist. To really understand what makes the story of Rafael Valdez truly unique, all you need to do is listen. Se acabó el amor y el sueño. El que le dio motivos a tu vida. El que transformó tu alma. What was it like uh, coming to LA from Mexico? So I remember it being like really tough, the actual transition. And then when we finally were over here, you know, it's new schools, new friends, no English. Um, it was all very uh, strange. As I got older, stepping into junior high, I think that's where I got tougher because kids are not so innocent anymore at that age. So I, made, I got made fun a lot, I got bullied a lot um, for being uh, an immigrant. I felt more ashamed. I guess I believed what they were saying. I was a kid, I didn't know how to process it, I guess. I loved his story and I wanted to know more. So I spent the next two days going to all the places that has shaped Rafael Valdez, where he worked when he first moved to the US, where he grew up, and where you'll find him today. But first, lunch with Rafael's father, Rafael Valdez II, so he could take me back to where it all started. What made you decide to move the family to the US? That would have to be a hard decision. Chasing his dreams. As a child, he when he was brought out here with by his parents, he always uh, envisioned himself out here. When you when you got here, that had to have been hard. Very hard, very hard. I do everything work. Uh, I wore on a pickup scar metal. Every, everything we need to get money for eat for my pay my rent. I do everything right here. It's very hard. My son Sergio and Rafael. He's come with me and uh, he's coming to pick up the, the metal. He's filled up the truck and he entered the truck. Yeah, they working with me uh, very, very hard too. What was that like? What was a typical Saturday or Sunday like with your dad? We look around for construction sites. My job, remember, was to get off and ask if they had any metal, any scrap metal to throw away that we could take. Yeah, I remember it being fun and then not so fun sometimes. You know, as a kid, I didn't want to go work and help my dad make money to, for us to eat. I would have to, you know, we'd go through dumpsters and go move all the trash. You've come pretty far from where you started. Do you ever stop and put it in that perspective? You know, it's funny actually from, so I live up in the hill, right? So I can see the whole city and I can see as far as to where my first apartment was. I, I, I tell you, you know, I can't see the apartment, but I can see the area. Like, okay, that's where I used to live, in that area, right? Like, I was telling my, my friend, I was like, that's crazy. I, like, I started over there, and look, and now I'm up here. So you can sit outside and see how far you've come, quite, yeah. quite literally. Yeah, yeah. Then we hit a swap meet, where Rafael worked late night weekends as a kid. We do all the scrap metal for several years, and then you saved up to do the swap meet and get a booth? So I just remember being at the swap meet with my dad selling clothes and he would make me, I would have to like sit in the front 
and like it's just like how she did he would make me like invite people over when we first came here all these all those white lights were like on and there's a stage in the center of the whole thing and there's people performing and it was like whoa like it was like a big like a big step up at that time we would sell shorts shorts and t-shirts yeah so i would have to say you know cheap shorts stop by she put in spanish all in spanish how do you say in spanish um Barato el short, pásele, pásele, barato el short. Man, I remember those setting up those tables. Oh my goodness. It really is bringing up a bunch of memories. On to our next stop, Rafael's Church. Pastor Mo. Pastor Mo. Nice to meet you. It's always been really clear that God and spirituality is a big part of your life. You've always said that, you've been pretty vocal. Where do you think that comes from and, and how does that play into your life and everything you do? I feel like once God touches your life, no matter which way you go or even if you stop going to church or even if you try to like put God to the side, God, God always like, you know, he doesn't let you go. Like, like he tugs at you. One of the things I think I like about Rafa is that regardless of who he interacted with, his faith was a big ass, a big part of his life. It was huge. Uh, he's gotten a tattoo on some of the world's m most famous people, you know, and everybody that he's introduced me to knew about his faith, you know what I'm saying? And so I think to, for me to see someone so gifted, so talented, and so well-known and well-liked, he was never ashamed of who he was and who God was in his life. And after all his successes in life, his true passion remains in his DNA, the music that runs through his veins, mariachi. Three, two, one. Se acabó el amor y el sueño, el que le dio motivos a tu vida, el que transformó tu alma, de niña mujer enamorada. Te hizo llorar con desespero, pero te hizo feliz tan solo con verlo. Se acabó el amor, ay qué lástima. Yep, he's good at this too, really good. Nunca volverán a hacerte un daño. 